Okay, now we're in section two. It's called verifying trigonometric identities. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing we did in the last section, except harder. So the, uh, the algebra associated with simplifying these things. Basically, what we're doing is we're given an equality, and we have trig functions on one side, trig functions the other. And we have to uh, simplify usually one side, the, the more complicated side, to try to make it equal to the other side. And once we show that they're the same, we've gone through the whole process. And there's really no easy way of, of doing these things. You just have to get kind of used to the possibilities. Typically, if you have 1 plus or minus something squared, you can use the Pythagorean identities. If, if you have trig functions other than the sine or cosine, which are multiplied together, you can use the reciprocal or the quotient identities to get everything in terms of sine and cosine. If you have fractions that uh, you've got two fractions, then you can combine them, find a common denominator, and a lot of times that helps. So let's just we're just going to look at some examples. <coughs> And then you can do some homework problems. I'll give you some more examples too. So just you just have to you have to look at them and just keep some point it comes to you. Hopefully. Okay. So here are the guidelines that are on page 362. So it says work with one side of the equation at the time. It is often better to work with the more complicated side first. So a lot of times the one side is very uncomplicated so you really only have to deal with one side most of the time but if both sides were complicated you know you just try to simplify it down to its simplest form uh, look for opportunities to factor an expression add fractions so we talked about that square binomial that means if you have like one plus the sine of x you multiply by one minus the sine of x uh, because you really can't have, it's not like you can have 1 plus the sine of x plus the sine squared of x. You can't use the Pythagorean identities, but you might be able to factor things. That's what. Um, create a mono, monomial denominator. So that is, uh, yeah, we'll, when we see it, I'll explain it. Look for opportunities to use fundamental identities. Note which functions are in the final expression you want. Sines and cosines pair up well, as do secants and tangents, and cosecants and cotangents. That's because the Pythagorean identities have those paired together. If the preceding guidelines do not help, try converting all terms to sines and cosines. So we just mentioned that. Always try something. Even paths that lead to dead ends provide insights. So you just got to be persistent may not you may not come up with the answer the first time and I may not come up with the answer the first time you know I've got I've got on my race the solution so I'm basically starting from scratch um, as I said look for Pythagorean identities so you've got these three Pythagorean identities so they may be there or you may have to do something to create them like I said, if you had 1 plus the sine of theta, you might multiply by 1 minus the sine of theta uh, to get 1 minus the sine squared of theta. So here is an example. <coughs> You've got two sides, left-hand side and right-hand side. So the left-hand side is more complicated, so that's one we're going to work on. Um, here you could multiply out using FOIL because you've got one that's plus and one that's minus, so some things are going to cancel out. And you might end up with something squared, which means you might be able to use a Pythagorean identity. So that's what happens in this case. You have one plus sine of alpha, one minus sine of alpha. So when you multiply first together, you get one. The inner and the outer are the same, except the sign's different, so they cancel out. And then you end up with negative plus the sine of alpha times the negative the sine of alpha, which is negative the sine squared of alpha. And then you say, oh, that looks, maybe that's one of those Pythagorean identities. So you write the Pythagorean identity in, the out that involves the sine, which is sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals one. And if you solve, if you subtract 
sine squared from both sides, you'll get 1 minus the sine squared of alpha. It's cosine squared of alpha. So you can make that substitution. And when you do, the left-hand side, which is what we simplified, becomes the right-hand side, which we didn't simplify. But they're equal to each other. And so you can say, I've done it. Okay, so that's the basic concept. That one obviously is easy. But so here's another one. So this one, um, so which is the more complicated side, and what do I do? So what I would do is I would think, okay, maybe I could, let's, it's got a lot of squared stuff, so if I were to write the Pythagorean identity out like this, and if I were to substitute in for the sine, if I solved this Pythagorean identity, for sine squared, I could plug that in. So I'd have cosine squared of beta, which is what I had to start with. And then I'm going to make this substitution using the Pythagorean identity. So for the sine squared, I'm going to put in 1 minus cosine squared beta. And I haven't done anything with the right-hand side. I could just kind of like dots until I get to the final thing. So you have a C, you have cosine squared beta, and I've got negative times a negative, so that's another cosine squared beta. So I get two cosine squared beta, and then I have negative times one, which is negative one. And now I can write the right-hand side down now that I've finished. And you see they're equal, and so that is that is verifying. Verifying is when they're the same, that the equality is the same because the two sides are the, actually the same. Okay, so here we have something. Um, you might want to simplify both sides. You know, when I, when I look at this, I see cosecant squared of t minus 1. That looks like one of the Pythagorean identities. If I go back over here, this one involving the cosecant. One, one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So let's just, let's just write that down. One plus cosecant squared of t equals cotangent squared of t. Here I've got one cosecant minus one. Let me make sure I wrote that down right. 1 plus cotangent. Yeah, I got it wrong. Cotangent and then cosecant. So I'm glad I went back and looked because so this was the cotangent. This is the cosecant. 1 plus cotangent squared of t. And here's the cosecant squared of t. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'll get cotangent squared of t is equal to cosecant squared of t minus 1. And so I'm going to write the uh, left-hand side. I don't think I've gotten where I need to be exactly yet, but I, I'm going to see where I am. So I've got the cosine of t times cosecant squared t minus 1, which is equal to the cotangent squared of t. And here I've got cotangent cubed of t. So you can see that if I... If I multiply now the right-hand side, I'm going to still fiddle around with the right-hand side. So if I multiply by the sine of t divided by the sine of t, what I'm trying to do is create another cotangent. So you can see these, these two combined together become another cotangent. So I get the cotangent cubed of t times the sine of t, but the sine is using the reciprocal relationship is 1 over the cosecant of t. And now the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And so I have verified the fundamental the identity. Okay, so the next one looks like I should simplify the left-hand side.
because the right hand side is just one single function so that obviously I, that's as far as I can't go any further than just having one of the six trig functions so my thought would be to um, maybe find a com denominator possibly or I could uh, multiply this by 1 plus the sine of theta to get so here's here's my thought on this one because I have I don't have everything multiplied together I get some kind of I've got this some plus and minus stuff that means I I'm not in a good position right now so what I would do is I would take this and I would so I have this original expression and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 1 plus the sine of theta and the reason I'm doing that is trying to create a Pythagorean identity so in the numerator I get the cosine of theta cotangent of theta times 1 plus the sine of theta all divided by and when I multiply these together I'll get 1 minus sine squared theta but the Pythagorean identity for cosine and sine says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 or if I subtract sine squared from both sides I'll get cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta so what that allows me to do is to replace this with cosine squared so the numerator I haven't done anything with yet but the denominator becomes cosine squared theta okay now that I've got a single denominator I think I'm going to combine these two two expressions or into one so I've got 1 plus sine theta here and dividing by the cosine squared of theta and you're like you want to cancel one of these out yeah why don't I do that okay so before I combine them um, let's get rid of that and replace that with the cosine of theta that way it'll be easier might as well do that so the first term and the second term if I multiply by the cosine of theta divide by the cosine of theta that's that's one but now I have so what I have is here minus the cosine of theta all divided by the cosine of theta so that's combines the two terms so the cotangent I'm going to rewrite the cotangent as the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta so that's the quotient so here I'll get cosine of theta over sine of theta plus here the signs cancel out so I get cosine of theta so the sine of theta divided by the same thing is cosine of theta then you subtract the cosine of theta all divided by the cosine of theta those cancel out so now I'm left with the cosine of theta over the sine of theta all divided by the cosine of theta but that's the same as taking if I make this into a fraction in the denominator I've got the cosine of theta times the sine of theta take the reciprocal so I get 1 over the cosine of theta cosine of theta is cancel out so I'm got left with 1 over the sine of theta which is equal to the cosecant of theta which is what I wanted to get so what I've done is manipulated the left hand side and that and then I can now write the right hand side and at that point we have verification
So there's a lot involved in that. First thing was to think I wanted to get this into a Pythagorean identity. So I could replace 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. Once I did that, then I said, oh, I've got these, I can, well, like first thing I do is I can simplify because I've got cosine theta here and cosine theta there. So if this goes out, cancels out with one of the cosine thetas. Then I say, okay, I'm going to combine these two terms, find a common denominator. So I multiply one by cosine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, combine these two. Then I use the um, quotient identity, cosine of theta over sine theta. Then I multiplied it out. So this times 1 is that. Cosine theta is sine theta over sine theta is just cosine theta. That cancels out with the second cosine. Now I'm down to just products and quotients. Actually, just quotients. So that's how that one's done. OK, now the next one, again, this you've got this. Um, 1 plus the sine of theta. It's kind of like the last one. So if I multiplied this by 1 minus the sine of theta in both the numerator and the denominator, I'm going to get a Pythagorean identity in the denominator. And then I might be able to, uh, let's, let's just do that. So we're just Again, you just got to try stuff. It's kind of like chess when you get good at this because you can kind of see a few steps ahead. So what we do is we would um, multiply and divide by 1 minus the sine of theta. And the whole idea here is to get the second term so that the denominator ends up being a Pythagorean type situation. So we get the first term still stays the same. It just has a single term in the denominator. So we get cosine of theta, 1 minus sine theta. In the denominator, we get 1 minus sine squared theta. But that's equal to the cosine squared theta. So we can make that substitution. So this becomes cosine of theta 1 minus sine theta divided by cosine squared theta. Now, um, I could um, you can see I can simplify this because I've got a cosine of theta in both the numerator and the denominator. So this becomes 1 minus sine theta divided by cosine of theta. So I cancel this out. Cancel this out with one of those. Now I've got a common denominator, so I can add the numerators together. So you've got 1 plus sine theta plus 1 plus minus sine theta. So, so these are going to cancel out. So you end up with 2 divided by cosine of theta. But the cosine of theta, 1 over the cosine is a secant. So you get 2 secant theta, which I think is what we're trying to figure out in the long run. 2 secant theta. So that's the right-hand side. This is all, all of what I've done so far is the left-hand side. So prove they're the same. OK, that kind of looks like something we had before. but Or is it the same problem? Yeah, it was this problem. So I think I've got cosine, cotangent, and 1 minus sine. Yeah, OK, we've already done that one. OK. <clears throat> so this one is interesting. Because <laughs> we've got the cosine of y, sine of x, sine of y. So this, this looks like it would involve some of those um, things that the, uh, we actually haven't done that yet. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. 
So let's try to figure out what this. I think this is what it's telling me what I need to do. Multiply and divide by the sine of x times the sine of y minus and probably do the same thing over here except multiply by the cosine of x minus the cosine of y because later in the chapter we have some other identities involved subtracting and adding so I am going to pause but I'll be back shortly So this is um, to give me an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing here. So it says multiply by the sine of x minus the sine of y. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the terms, the first term, we're going to multiply and divide by the, like the denominator, but we're going to, we're going to change the plus to a minus. So we have the sine of x minus the sine of y divided by the same thing. Sine of x minus the sine of y. And then the second part, you're doing the same kind of thing, except we're going to do the same thing in the denominator. So you're going to have cosine of x plus cosine of y and you're going to multiply by the cosine of x minus the cosine of y in both the numerator and the denominator. So what happens in the denominators is uh, use the FOIL, use FOIL, and you end up in the denominator with sine squared x minus cos uh, sine squared y. And in the numerator, I think we just leave it the way it is. Cosine x minus cosine y times sine x minus sine y. Because you'll see I have the same I have the same two terms in the second one as far as the numerator is concerned. So if I can prove that the denominators are equal but opposite sign, then they're going to add up to zero. So we have cosine squared x minus cosine squared y. So when you do the inner and outer terms, they're going to cancel out because one's plus and one's minus. So what we do is you've got the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. And if we solve for the sine squared of x, that's equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. And you have the same thing for y. So we can also say the sine squared of y is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of y. So if you plug those into the denominator, so that's the denominator of the first term. So sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And then we subtract sine squared of y, which is 1 minus cosine squared of y. And you see the 1 and the negative 1 cancel out. So we're left with a negative, the quantity cosine squared x. Here we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. But if I factor out a negative again, I'm going to have negative cosine squared y. And so this denominator here could be replaced with negative cosine squared x minus cosine squared y. And you see the denominators is exactly the same, except this one's minus and this one's plus. So when you add the numerators together, now we have a common denominator, except uh, you're going to have a negative sign here. So uh, the numerator is going to go to zero and the denominator is going to be
cosine squared x minus cosine x. So you'll end up with 0 over cosine squared x minus cosine squared y, which is 0, which is what they were trying to prove. Um, the next one is there's some problems where you find the, uh, you g g verify graphically that the, the identity is true. So all you have to do is just plot the left hand side and plot the right hand side. So if I open up my graphing program and I plot each side of the equation and I get the same overlying graph, then I know we're good. So what we have is the cosecant cosecant of x to the fourth power minus two times the cosecant of x squared plus one. So that's one function. And the other one is the cotangent cotangent of x to the fourth power. So we say graph, and what you get is this. Now you get this red line here, which is just an anomaly of the uh, plotting program. But because they look exactly the same, we know that it's true. And it says verify, uh, well, prove it. Um, so probably what we would do here is you could, you could factor the left-hand side. So you could say it's cosecant squared of x minus 1 times cosecant squared of x minus 1. But there's that uh, identity. If we go back to the beginning of this section, actually of section 1, these are verifying. But going back to the using, you have the one that says 1 plus cotangent. It's the, th the third of the Pythagorean identities, which says that 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant, or cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1 or negative the cotangent squared of x equals 1 minus cosecant squared of x. So you see we have 1 minus, or cosecant squared of x minus 1. Actually, that's the first one. So we have this one. And um, so you can then substitute cotangent squared of x for the first one. And you can substitute cotangent squared of x for the second one. and when you multiply the cotangent squares together, you get cotangent to the fourth, which is now equal to the same thing that's on the right-hand side. And so graphically, we showed it, and analytically, we showed it. OK, so the next one is, uh, it looks like, you know, this is the square root of 1 plus sine theta divided by the square root of 1 minus the sine of theta. So if we multiply by the square root of 1 plus sine of theta divided by the square root of 1 plus sine of theta, in the numerator, so this is all the left-hand side. If you, if you multiply the numerators together, you get 1 plus sine of theta. In the denominator, you would get the square root of 1 minus sine theta. Um, you could put those two square roots together. So you get the square root of 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta. And when you use FOIL in the denominator, you'll get 1 minus sine squared theta. Uh, 
because the inner and outer cancel out. But the first Pythagorean identity says that sine squared theta plus cosine theta is equals 1. So that means um, 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. So we get 1 plus sine theta over the square root of the cosine squared of theta. And because if you take the absolute value, I mean, if you take the square root of something squared, you know, the argument of the trig function has to be, not the trig function, but the, the argument of the square root has to be positive, which it is. But <clears throat> it means that uh, we have to put the absolute value of the cosine to make sure that this is always a positive quantity. So here, when you square it, it becomes positive, and then we take the square root, it becomes positive. So the, the only way that you can make sure that happens, if you make this simplification of the square root of the cosine squared, is to put the absolute value around it. And that's where that comes from. And therefore, it's now been verified because I have what's on the left-hand side. It's the same as the thing that's on the right-hand side. And I believe that's it. So, yeah, it, uh, it takes some practice to do this. So, uh, you know, most likely the test problems will not be extremely complicated. You're just not going to do enough of them to get to where you need to be to be to be good at these things. Sometimes it takes insight. Sometimes you go in the wrong direction. You don't have time to do on a test.